Hi everyone, welcome to Mathematically Inclined. Today we are going to make your complex numbers also super simple. Yes, this is a shortcut for identifying the locus of a point when you look at a complex number and eventually get the answer as a conic section. These questions are so popular with your JEEs, with your CETs and many more competitive exams. And what if I tell you a trick in which you can identify this in three seconds? Yes, it is possible you know when you are on this channel. Looking at the first question, it says the point Z in the complex plane or the Argon plane or the Gaussian plane satisfies this condition, this complex equation, then find the locus of Z. The answer should be it would make a hyperbola. That's it. The second one, the same question and this time this is the equation. The locus should be an ellipse. Yes. Coming to this one, this tells us here the locus should be the perpendicular bisector between the points joining minus 5 iota and 5 iota. And for the fourth one, the locus should be simply a square. Yes, it is this simple to identify. Stay tuned till the end of this video as I discuss a lot of questions and the level of the questions keeps going higher and higher. So here's the magic for each one of you. So suppose you are given two complex points Z1 and Z2. Now in place of these Z1 and Z2, you could also have basic real numbers because you know every real number can be expressed as a complex number. So they would be given to be the fixed points. So in short, there would be a constant value allotted to them and a point P moves in a plane such that it satisfies a certain condition. You have to find locus of this point P or locus of this Z. Now, what do I mean by locus? That under the given conditions, when my point P moves, it traces a certain path. It traces a certain curve. Which curve is it is for you to identify. You might feel they are very overwhelming or in short, they'll be very difficult to remember. But trust me, that is not the case. So. Each time you come across this form mod Z minus Z1 and you're looking for the symbol plus mod Z minus Z2 is equal to some constant. All you need to do is mentally check is this constant coming out to be equal to Z1 minus Z2? If your answer is no, then it's a simple ellipse. So very similar to your equation of an ellipse which was x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1. So if k is not equal to their difference then it's simply an ellipse and in case it is equal to this then this p would simply lie on the line segment joining these points a and b. Very simple to remember. Likewise in next equation very similar but in place of plus you have a minus sign in between. Then in that case again the same logic if k turns out to be if k is not equal to z1 minus z2 then it's simply a hyperbola. Very similar to your equation of hyperbola which was x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to 1 and in case your k is equal to z1 minus z2 then this p lies on the ray ba ba means beginning from b and moving towards a so you basically have to remember for plus it's an ellipse if it is not equal for minus it's a hyperbola if it's not equal for plus if they are equal it's simply on the line segment joining a b and this is on the ray joining the ulta which is ba so on this side I have if you come across the same thing in place of this you could also be given mod z minus z1 is equal to k times mod z minus z2. So 
so it could be in the ratio form or maybe this form then in that case if your k is equal to 1 in short i'm trying to say if your mod of z minus z1 is the same as mod of z minus z2 then simply your p lies on the perpendicular bisector of ab yes and in case k is not equal to 1, then in that case, it is simply a circle. Lastly, this is a very special case that, you know, it's very similar to this ellipse equation, but in place 1, but in place of z1 and z2, you specifically have the conjugate equal to some k. Then in that case, it has to be a square. Make a note of all these very carefully and then trust me all the questions would become Bacho Ka Khel. When you look at the first question, since there is a negative sign in between, the first expectation is it could be a hyperbola. So here, if you realize the form, your z1 is minus 2 and your z2 is plus 2. Mod of z1 minus z2 is equal to minus 2 minus 2, which is going to be a 4 and not equal to any of your plus or minus 3. Yes, your answer was rather a hyperbola. Trust me, all these calculations you can do mentally and you can directly write it was a hyperbola. Same way with the plus sign in between, we anticipate it to be an ellipse. Now again, your z1 minus z2 would be 1 minus minus 1. The mod turns out to be 2 which is nowhere equal to 4. Thus the answer was a simple ellipse. Now look at the third question, you are given mod of z minus 5 iota upon mod of z plus 5 iota is equal to 1. As you can clearly see my k has been given as 1. So if you remember if k was not equal to 1 the answer was a circle but if k is equal to 1 in this case the answer would be the perpendicular bisector. Basically, your locus P would lie on the perpendicular bisector of Z1 and Z2. Now, if you realize my Z1 is 5 iota here and Z2 is minus 5 iota. So, their perpendicular bisector technically turns out to be an x-axis. Why? Because if you try plotting these on the plane, then what happens is minus 5 is somewhere here, 5 is somewhere here. So their perpendicular bisector is simply your x-axis. Wasn't that so quick and easy? And last but not the least, our special case z plus z bar and there's a plus z minus z bar is equal to 8. Simply your answer is that the locus would lie on the square. Have a look and then we continue with more and more questions. You people want to stay more and more mathematically inclined? Then join my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter and also join me on my WhatsApp group Mathematically Inclined Now. All the links you would find in the description box below and also for the WhatsApp group, you can send me a message on this number and you would get the link. Click on that and you get all the latest updates first. And now continue watching. Coming to the next two really interesting questions. Question 5 says if the equation mod of z minus iota plus mod of z plus iota is equal to k represents an ellipse then what is k not equal to well you have already discussed when if it's plus then and it is equal to k it cannot be an ellipse provided your mod of z1 minus z2 is not equal to k so here mod z1 is iota and mod z2 is minus iota should not be equal to k so mod of or modulus of 2 iota would be simply square root of 2 square which is not equal to k. In short, k should not be equal to 2. Same way, looking at this question, you are given that mod of this number upon this number is equal to m. 
then it represents a circle then m should not be equal to what now if you recollect the standard form of a circle then you know it was supposed to be mod of z minus z1 upon mod of z minus z2 is equal to k where k should not be equal to 1 right but then here it is z however here it is twice of z so first i have to bring this 2 outside so this becomes twice of mod z minus iota by 2 upon mod of z plus 1 is equal to m in short if i take this m to the other side it becomes m by 2 in short my m by 2 should not be equal to 1 or in other words m is not equal to 2 wasn't this super quick have a look it is time for your do it yourself so again a and b are given to be the fixed points and a point p moves in a plane such that it satisfies this equation you have to find the locus of p answer fast in the comment section below because you know the top three accurate answers always get named in my upcoming videos <music> I am 101% sure you people enjoyed this video. Yes? Then make sure to give this one a big thumbs up, share it with all the people you know and if you haven't done that so far, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. I would see you with a lot of new and exciting videos very very soon. Until then, bye bye.